Welcome to a special episode of Tales from the Fandom. Today is January 20th, and sadly, this is the day where Disney has killed Girl Meets World. Or maybe not. We'll find out hopefully in the next couple of weeks or months if Netflix, Hulu, or someone else will save the series. Uh, as we record, I know that the uh, executive uh, director and writer for the show uh, has said publicly that he's in the works uh, early stages of discussion with Netflix to maybe bring it over a la Fuller House uh, or Gilmore Girls as a revival. Uh, but we shall see. But right now we are at the end of season three, where uh, the the story of Riley Matthews and friends is coming to a close tonight on the Disney Channel. And who better to talk with me about a teenage ish girl meets world type show than my longtime friend Steve Brady Calhoun? Two middle-aged guys talking about this show. My uh, my wife and my 16-year-old sister-in-law say I'm a teenage girl at heart. So, <laughs> so this should work out just fine. Uh, so, yeah. I would say decent show. Um, you know, it helped that it had a lot of the Boy Meets World nostalgia attached to it. Mm-hmm. And that kept... That's one of the main things that kept me watching. Um, I would say that never got, like, super great in the way that Boy Meets World in its later seasons, uh, the sort of the last couple of years of high school and a couple of years in college, mm-hmm. was just great, where, like, every episode was was really, really good. But in the same token, and they only gave it, They've only given it three years so far. I was really looking forward to, again, the same sort of time frame of later in high school where you really have to, where you're really confronted with um, bigger things emotionally that Mm -hmm. you're confronted with at middle school and early high school. Uh, So I was looking forward to that. And we we rise up right now. We're not getting there. Right. And I know... I know that they've had interviews with some of the writers or uh, the executive producer, the the executive director, the creator. I can't remember his name for life of me right now. It's Glenn. uh, Is it Glenn Michael? Glenn Jacobs? It's. I think it's. I don't think it's Glenn Jacobs. That's a professional wrestler. Uh, let's see here. I think it's Michael Jacobs. Michael Jacobs. Michael Jacobs. So I know that there's been interviews with um, several of the creative staff behind Girl Meets World, and one of the things that they've routinely brought up is the difference on channels. Boy Meets World was on ABC, and right. it allowed them a greater flexibility for their stories. They had a, a a varying target audience. They were on the TGIF um, round of shows back at that point. Girl Meets World is on Disney Channel, and I believe their target audience is like 8 to 13-year-olds. Right. And I know from what they've stated, there were a lot of things that they could not do because of them being on the Disney Channel. Right. And it it really it, when you watch the show you can sort of see the them hitting that wall that Disney Channel wall again and again mm-hmm. where they want to take this show into a I mean they want to talk about divorce and they want to talk about um, cyberbullying cyberbullying yeah and some of the really the things that middle school kids and high school kids are actually facing in real life. Now they're still going to talk about it in a, you know, in a sitcom-y kind of way. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody's probably going to make the right decision, and it's all going to work out in the end for the most part. Right. But even even talking about those issues, I mean, you know, I, I didn't watch a lot of Full House, but Full House, ne- as near as I could tell, never. I mean, that was just a, a yuck show. You know, we have we have a joke, and then we have another joke, and then we have a, a hug, mm-hmm. and Boy Meets World and, and Girl Meets World were not were smarter than that, I guess, is, is 
the way I would phrase that. I mean, it was still a sitcom, but it was a sitcom that um, that had that was that was trying to do more. You know, that had goals and ambitions outside of just everybody needs to say their catchphrase. Right. And not only that, like you had uh, like throwing back to Boy Meets World, they allowed their characters to screw up. They allowed their characters to get themselves into bad situations that might not end on, you know, as you say, like on Full House, like ends in a hug, everything works out. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes it took a few episodes for things to work out. Sometimes it took a whole season for things to work out. Well, and, and you know, people, uh, especially on Boy Meets World, uh, people died. <laughs> you know, like, how many, how many loved ones did, um, uh, uh, Corey's best Sean, how many, how many loved ones did Sean, like, lose and have to deal with, uh, that his, that his dad died and his mom ran off and she was crazy. Mm-hmm. And, yep. you know, and it made for, I mean, you know, it was sort of like they were saying, you know, if you have it good in life, if you have a life where you've got two parents who care about you or even even if they're divorced or whatever, um, you know, be real thankful for that because there because there are people in the world like Sean. Exactly. You know, who are str- who are just struggling uh, to make it day to day. I remember asking um you know, well, my pastor, but someone who works in the community, I was like, how do people who don't have, I mean, I always had my parents that I could just be like, look, I screwed up this or I, you know, I messed up financially or whatever. Can you help me out? And they were always there to, to be able to do that. And I was like, how do people make it when they don't have that? And he was like, they don't. Exactly. Don't <laughs> you know, they, they face the consequences of that. Um so, uh, you know, I thought, I mean, do you think Girl Meets World ever was ever a better show than just a nostalgia show? I think as a show overall, no. I think okay. it, it, was, it was deeply rooted in the Boy Meets World nostalgia, which is what got me into it. I, and that's, not, I mean, you could have done Boy Meets World, The Family Years, I wouldn't have cared. I. Right. You know, Corey's there, Topanga's there, Sean was promised to be there, other characters were mentioned that they were going to bring in. I, I would have signed up regardless of what they were doing. I wouldn't have cared. Um, Girl Meets World as a show, I, I love, like, I love the show, but, I mean, again, we talk about that Disney wall where there were episodes where you would watch one episode, say like the cyberbullying episode, mm-hmm. or like learning about Harley Kiner, like as a character and how he has grown through Corey. You get right. those really solid story based uh, arcs that they have. So you get that like wonderful episode, the episode where you're like, that's what the show needs to be is. Still funny, still having that comedy, but telling that serious story and progressing from there. And then the next episode is ridiculous. Yeah. And I think that's what really, as as far as, like, me as the viewer, I'm like, can you guys just do a good, like, run of episodes where it's based on seriousness? Like, when they went to Texas... That yeah. was a good run of like that is a good two episodes of them like doing the Texas trip and uh, like the following up with it at the end and having like and building on those episodes where they reference back to those episodes instead of having it be like more of standalone. But then you get those episodes where it's just corny or it doesn't really work and and it's like come on guys I mean let's let's have more story continuity, which they did for the most part, but it seems like they would take two steps forward and sometimes take those three steps back. Yeah, they, you know, and I sometimes I felt like the serious episodes, what I would call the serious episodes, they didn't they didn't work either. They were too sad all the time, and maybe it was because you're dealing with the drama of teenage girls 
who, you know, are going to have more cry fests mm-hmm. know, than maybe Corey and Sean would have. Are they going to deal with because they're girls? They're going to deal with it differently, right? Just, so, sometimes that seriousness was just. I was just like, um, you know, what the what the episode to me that was like, um, or maybe it was two episodes. I don't know how many they did that like perfectly works that I would go back and watch at any point is when they brought Eric back. Okay, and he's a senator, and it's it. First of all, it's everything Eric does is hilarious. Yes. Like I was laughing out loud, which I didn't do a lot during Girl Meets World. But I was laughing out loud for all of that. And they still made me, like, cry when they brought Tommy in. Mm-hmm. The, the kid that he had, like, gotten close to, and then he had to give, the, in Boy Meets World, he'd gotten close to this little kid, but he had to he had to give him a better life, and so he had to sort of convince him to go live with his new family. Right. And, he had to deal with his um, his friend from college, who I can't remember. I mean, I only saw him for three seasons, so why would I remember his name? So, <laughs> but you know, he had he, he had a friend in college who was like Sean's like it's Sean's half brother, half brother, yep. and that guy was always like Eric was crazy, and he was always dragging this guy who who was sort of. I don't want to say straight laced, but was was headed for a business career, you know, a normal life and a normal business career. And Eric kept dragging him along on these crazy adventures, and that's where the the comedy of it was. And so that guy, of course, now they're all grown up. Eric's a senator, but he's still crazy. And um, this guy is um, doing bad things, I think, to the planet. You know, he's a a corporate guy, and he's trying to get the – uh, the government to sign up for whatever anti-environmental thing he wants to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, and there were other, I really enjoyed, I mean, there were episodes I enjoyed. I enjoyed the fact that Corey was Feeny now. I mean, that, right. was, that was a brilliant decision, but, and, and a lot of that worked for me, even though, there's no classroom in the world that runs like Corey's classroom. That's right. Okay. It's a TV show. There was no classroom in the world that ran like Feeney's classroom. I mean, you know, they had Feeney for – that was a running joke near the end of the series, that Feeney was their teacher for 12 years. Exactly. And that's okay, you know. I mean, there's not a show without you – without a suspension of disbelief. I don't know that they ever figured out what to do with Topanga. Um, they had great Topanga moments in as the series as Girl Meets World went on, but it wasn't. It, it was never really. She was never really allowed to shine. Right. Um. But it was. A, I mean, I watched them all. I didn't. I didn't give up on it. And there were there were some really bad episodes, but there were some really good ones that. There too. I mean, if you put me on the spot, I'm not sure I could tell you exactly which ones were which. But it was a it was above average sitcom that I could watch with my wife and my child running around, which is what we look for in my house. Exactly, uh, especially watch, when the child is awake. Yeah, yeah. Can I watch this with my child who is awake? And is it? You know, I mean, we watched. Now I never. I you know I don't want to. I don't want to like yell at Full House, but like I never wa- I watched Full House once or twice as a kid, and I was like, "This is terrible." My wife watched all of them, and she tried to watch the revival on Netflix, and I was just like, "No, I can't. I can't sit through this. This is bad." <laughs> and and she and she only watched two episodes of the revival, and she's like, "This is yeah, this is not good." So, uh. Well, I know, I was going to say, I know that on Girl Meets World, one of my favorite characters to see develop over the three seasons was one that I was not really feeling on that first few episodes was uh, Minkus, Farkas Minkus, Farkas, Farkle Farkle. Minkus. Farkle. Farkle. Farkle had. Yeah, yeah, that first, the first, what, half season, you were just like, someone kill Farkle. Right. This show, this show will be almost good if someone puts a bullet in Farkle's head. 
But then yeah. he he just evolves into probably one of those characters that, like, it would have been interesting to see how he had developed as a, like, because he's really like that glue that sticks all of them together. Yeah, he and, absolutely was. And to to see him and how he dealt with, like, Riley and Maya with the feelings about Lucas and like really just telling them, you know, you've got to do it or I'm going to say something. Uh, it would have been nice to have seen how he had developed in the next couple of seasons if they have them. I, I like what they, what they ended up doing with him. You know, they gave him a girlfriend that was kind of on the same wavelength Mm -hmm. that matured him out of that. Um, you know, he was playing, I mean, he was basically playing what, who was the guy on Saved by the Bell that he was playing? Uh, Screech. Guy. Yeah, he was playing Screech, you know. They, they given that show a Screech, which is always a bad move. <laughs> and, they, and they saved it by having him mature and change and not be that character. Um, but at the same time, I, saw, I was like, um, being a guy, and you were this guy, too, who grew up and was the nice guy who the girls never looked at, mm-hmm. and Farkle was the nice guy that the two attractive girls never looked at, I really wanted him to end up with one of them. I, like, I did, too. I I would have, if they if they had not gone the way that they did with Lucas, it right. would have been nice to have seen something with Riley and Farkle, because I saw them, like, really, like... It's that same kind of tight, close friendship that, say, like, uh, from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, like Xander and Willow have. Right. But it, it would have been something to see. And the same goes for the, the later character introduction of Zay and how mm-hmm. Zay and um, Maya start to have, like, something yeah. happening. But, you know, then there's always the uh, the little brother of Corey. Uh, yeah, what, whatever his name is, I don't know. I know you're talking about the little, yeah, really little brother of Corey, who's only now like what in his early twenties and was yeah born going in into black, college. Yep, and was born in the last two seasons of the show for some reason. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, I, a lot of and see part of the problem was is that this would be they would do like life or death romantic entanglements with these characters. And then the next step, and they'd work it out, and everybody would be in love. And then the next episode, nobody's talking to one another or hanging out. Mm-hmm. And you'd be like, whoa, 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 what, what happened? You know, what, I thought this was life or death. And, like, even the, um, I mean, after they, after they go through all that of, like, a season and a half of being a triangle, mm-hmm. did, did, uh, What's her name and the cowboy ever go on a date? Uh, Maya and Maya and Lucas. Maya and Lucas, did they ever go on a date? They did. Are you sure? I, I'm I'm <laughs> fairly positive, but it it was more about the 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 love triangle was more about Maya protecting Riley than it actually being a love triangle and yeah, protecting they their friendship. That out with Maya being crazy and or being Maya again. Right. Right. That's how the love triangle. Maya realizes that she's been pretending to be Riley. Pretending to be Riley. And now she's yeah. And, and then she then she has to find herself a la Sean. Right. Right. Uh well you got how many how many Sean episodes did they give us? Is there like two and three years? Uh I I mean he's been in it maybe five episodes, I think. Oh, I wow, mean that it, many? It, it it wasn't a lot, but he, I mean, he def- definitely showed up, especially in the the later, like this season right here, he showed up at least three, at least three times. Did my, I think one of my favorite things was the, um, the Christmas episode where they don't want to go home and be with where uh, Maya doesn't want to go home and be with Sean. Right. And Sean doesn't show up in the whole episode. And I was just like, y'all didn't want to play the actor, did you? You just wanted to, you wanted to do this episode, and then you could say at the end of the episode, oh, then they went home and had Christmas with John without actually right. having to pay an actor to show up. I was like, that's funny. Um, all right, so 
do we do you have a favorite? Because I think I, I think my Eric shows up as my favorite Girl Meets World episode. Do you have a favorite Girl Meets World episode? Um, realistically, I think I like the one where Pluto isn't a planet anymore. <laughs> that's that's the one I can always always remember, and it's like Pluto's not a planet, uh, and that's when uh, the old lady downstairs passes yeah. away, and Topanga. Uh, again, in a not really a Topanga moment. Mm-hmm. I mean, Topanga is the one character where she didn't have a lot to do, although she was this amazing lawyer because she's amazing at everything. Right. But like, you don't really see Topanga buying a coffee shop type restaurantish place, but she does. Right. But I really liked uh, like uh, Riley's speech about Pluto and Pluto's not a planet and. Uh, there's yeah. a, there's a few up, other episodes where like uh, Minkus uh, invested his money and he wasn't sure if he was gonna like make yeah, out with be poor? Is that the right one? yeah that was a good one I remember that's that. that's another good one um, anything with Harley Kiner I loved having him as who he became yeah yeah those were I mean I couldn't argue with any of those I think all of those were pretty good. Um, and, and, you know, I'm not sure that I can name, like, um, a lot of it for me, the, the good ones would just be the ones where somebody from, from the old show shows up the first time Sean shows up. Right. You know, I'm pretty happy with that. The first, um, do their parents come for thank? does his parents come for Thanksgiving? And there's like several of them, you know, his parents are there and, uh, you know, which I think happens in the first season or so. Yeah, that that happens. Um, they show up like once or twice. Yeah, I mean, you know, for me, this really was just a, a nostalgia show, um, uh, and and they did, and when they did decided to do that, then they did it. I don't know if they did twelve episodes a season. They did it half of them, um, because. And I really enjoyed, you know, they, they also wrapped up the loose, some of the loose ends. They, they told you what happened to, um, uh, the teacher who got in a motorcycle accident in Boy Meets World. Yep, and Mr. Turner. Mr. Turner. And then they leave him in the hospital bed in Boy Meets World and never talk about him again. They talk, um, well, they talk about him in graduation. They're like, yeah. oh, he was in that other hallway with Minkus. Oh, yeah. hi. Yeah. Yeah. They did, they did do that, which was sort, which was amusing. Um, but he got to he got to come back out and have one one more bow, um, and uh, you know. Uh, but it, it it all sort of runs together for me too, which probably may or may not be a good good sign. I I, I can tell you, I was thinking about Boy Meets World, and I can instantly tell you uh, the first episode I saw, the best episode, and then probably every every storyline. But part of that is that Boy Meets World, like the first episode I saw of Boy Meets World was the episode where Corey's 16 and he's got his license Mm -hmm. and all he wants to do is leave the house and his dad wants him to stay and have like a birthday party and they're having a fight about it. Right. And like, I mean, I know why that means so much to me was because I was 16 when that episode came out, you know, and I was going through the same kind of issues about driving and you're you're realizing that you're you're about to leave not only are you about are you are you going to be able to leave whenever you want get in the car and go away but you're going to leave for for real um and the uh you know the best episode was the one uh right after they get married where i guess it's, there's two episodes mm-hmm. where he um they're living in the dorms and it's horrible. Yep, the li- the, the, mar- the married person they're li- dorms. They're living in the married person dorms and they're and they're and they're just horrific. And my, you know, there's so many little good moments in that. You know, Sean comes over and he's like, "This is all right," and Corey's like, "You're nuts." And mm-hmm. I'm thinking, well, yes, yeah, to Sean, this is a roof and a stove and a faucet, and you could you fix this up and it's fine. And right. Corey's not not ever experienced anything. Corey and Topanga both not mm-hmm. ever experienced anything like this, and they they think it's horrific. 
and they they go to look at a house and it's this beautiful you know uh little cottage or whatever and they can't afford it they got no jobs and he goes to his parents he's like just just uh co-sign the loan with me and his dad is like nope <laughs> right <laughs> which you know is exactly the right answer and and it all um you know, eventually, Corey starts working. Corey, you know, he they can't believe that the parents won't help him, mm-hmm. which is exactly, yep. you know, I mean, I don't think I got married at the same time. I got married probably years after that episode aired. But yep. I remember getting married and whatever, and and really, 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 when you get married, you know, you're when you're young, when you're a young adult, you're you're single. You're not on your own yet, you know, in modern America. Your parents probably still help out. Maybe they pay a bill or two or they, you know, or you can at the very least, if you screw everything up, you can go back home, right? Right. You leave the apartment, whatever. But when you get married, all that falls away, and you're either going to make it with this person or you're not. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And this is it. (laughs) And... um. You know, and the end of that is it's not that they, they get the house they want. It's just that he fixes the pipes, and then they go over, and he's like, hi, I fixed the pipes. I got clean water in this place now, and you didn't help me with nothing. And the dad's like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, yep. and, it's and the his, best part of marriage, you know. When yep. you're young and married, you're figuring this out. Not only that, like, especially with uh, Corey's dad, like, they didn't approve of the marriage. Of Not, they, like, uh... Corey's dad uh, and the mom, like, when they got married, they got married young. And he's like, you know, we had to do everything by ourselves, too. No one helped us. Yeah. And, you know, just because we're in a better position now, you guys, like, they they blessed Corey and Topanga. Yeah. But, you know, they also were like, you have made that decision. Go forth. Yeah, that's exactly. You are all, you have, you know. You, with the knowledge we have given you and everything we told you, you decided to get married while you're in college and did not have jobs. Yep. Good luck with that. <laughs> you know, we love you. We hope it works out for you. Uh, and uh, you are on your own. And uh, and yeah, I I love that. I guess it was two. I love those two episodes. Those are some of my. Uh, uh, and, and again. You know, I've watched all of them, and, I mean, I've seen it, and the middle school ones are okay, mm-hmm. and the high school ones are at, get better, in my mind, than the middle school ones, and the college ones are almost as, are, are the best episodes. Um, but maybe that's just because I was, you know, where I was in life when I watched them. I think well, if exactly. we had been, I think if we'd watched this show as teenage girls and had to ask our parents what what was going on from the nostalgia stuff? We might we might have liked this show better, um, but we came at it as grown people who were, you know, and this show wasn't meant for us necessarily. Certainly, uh, probably wasn't meant for us, right? You know, but it definitely it had some good moments. You're exactly right. That Pluto episode was pretty good, um, uh, you know, and that and it. And I mean, again, it's a sitcom dealing with death. <laughs> yep. You, know? you don't really, you don't really find that on the Disney Channel. Yeah, you don't expect that. <laughs> no one expects the French Inquisition, and no one expects uh, uh, the Spanish Inquisition, and no one expects death on the Disney Channel. You know. That's uh, um, that's so true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, now I got to ask. Uh, in the Girl Meets World universe, who is your favorite character? Of the okay, so that excludes every Boy Meets World original character. You have to come up with an an original Girl Meets World character. Yes. Um. None of them. No. <laughs> uh, I don't. It would probably be. Later, Farkle. Okay. Um, not early Farkle, obviously, but once he matures into a into a human being, 
and he's not a punchline. Uh, he's he's a really uh, solid character. Um, I mean, you know, I liked I liked Riley and Maya. I thought that was a fun um, relationship. I liked Maya more than I liked Riley. Okay, by a lot, I think. I thought I thought Riley was. Uh, um, you know, they wanted to make her into this Corey character where she always saw, like, the bright side of whatever. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't think it worked in the same way it did for Corey. And I don't think Corey was ever that sunny. No. Corey was a bundle of nerves, but he was a bundle of nerves that believed that uh, that he and Topanga were going to be uh, together forever, and that really made that relationship. And he believed that he could save Sean from whatever stupidity Sean got into, and that made that relationship. But he wasn't... Um, it wasn't just through the power of positivity. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's just like, I will be happy, and then the world will somehow be happy, you know? Right. Like, I feel like Corey had to earn the things that mattered to him, and she and she would just like be smiley, you know. Yeah. I'm happy, and things will work out. And I, I don't know. I feel like they didn't show their work a lot of times. Like you get to the end of the episode, and it would be okay, and you go, "How did we get from, you know, uh, every everybody's." suicidal to, okay, everything's fine, we're all right again. Right. And, but, um, yeah, Farkle was cool. Maya was cool. I don't, I'm don't. i not sure that... Uh, I'm not sure that I ever understood what those girls saw in Lucas other than he was an attractive dude from Texas. That could play the guitar. I, that could play the was like. I mean, was there ever anything like, uh, you know, I, if you're going to hang out with somebody, when you you'd rather hang out with Farkle, wouldn't you? Or is that I, like I mean, even, you know, before you'd hang out with Lucas. You yeah. know, I didn't. I, I'd like to. That's that's the one thing with Zay is I would have liked to have seen more character development from him. Yeah. But I, I mean, they were going with a, a very short time frame with once they introduced him to actually having him around. Yeah, I mean, you know, he and he and Farkle's girlfriend Smackle. Uh, Smackle were both like, Well, we'll bring him in one episode and see how it goes. Mm-hmm. And, they, yep. and then they ended up bringing him back, you know, a couple times, but um or making him part of the regular I guess at the end and the last season they were all regulars. Yeah. Um <sighs> And that's tough to do with having let, let's let's see here. Six uh Six characters trying to get screen time on top of Corey, Topanga, yeah. uh, Augie, Ava, yeah. and whoever else they happen to have in that episode. And they and they had to service us too. They had to make the people who were who were turning this show, the parents who were watching this show with their kids, or the adult sad adults who were watching this show with no kids. Um who had loved the previous show, they had to do things to make us happy, too. Right. You know? So, I mean, it was a real... I, I would I would give them a lot of credit for threading the needle as well as they did, um, given that, you know, you've got six kid characters, however many adult characters, and, and all of us want you to... Um, want it to just be Boy Meets World continues, mm-hmm. as opposed to its own thing. I, I I actually do. I mean, I I got to give them credit for they did their best to try and make it its own thing that stood on its own two feet. It could have been nostalgia show twenty four seven, and I don't think it was. I might have been happier with the show as a grown person who loved the original show if it had been nostalgia show. Right. You know. Um. But I I don't know. After three seasons, I. I I don't. I don't feel like. Again, I mean, you know, the good the good parts of of Boy Meets World weren't happening three seasons in. You know, three seasons right. in, they were still were they in they were either in middle school or they were freshmen in high school. 
Right. Three yeah. seasons into Boy Meets World, they had uh, gotten finally, I think they had jumped into high school. They had done a, like a, a time jump almost where they had gone quickly from middle school mm-hmm. um, up to high school by the third season. Yeah. And I mean, that was the season that had Mr. Turner for the first time and mm-hmm. had um, Mr. Turner's teacher buddy who was uh, African-American, whose name I can't remember. And Feeney was the principal, and he wasn't teaching them anymore. Maybe he was teaching one class, but he was the principal. Mm, yep. you know, they changed everything in the school. They gave him this cool new teacher. Um, and, you know, if they'd ended that show in three seasons, we wouldn't look back on it and go, oh, that was a great show. We'd look back and go, well, you remember that show? Yeah, right. That was on. Yeah, I remember watching a couple episodes of that. You know, Um so, I, I don't know. I I really do. If they, I think if they went to Netflix or something like that, I'd want them to add like, um, I'd actually want them to subtract some characters and add some characters. I if, who who would you want them to subtract? Uh, uh, Smackle, um. Lucas, if they could come up with a way to subtract him, mm-hmm. I, I I don't think you know. Looking at it, I don't think that that's the Corey Topanga relationship they'd hoped it would be. Um, okay. And they even hint it, hint a little bit that it's not the Corey Topanga relationship. When um, I just finished, we just watched tonight the episode before the finale, and Riley's like, "Me and Maya forever." And me and Lucas, maybe. You right. Know? Like, that's not, uh, that's not the Corey to Banger relationship, you know? Right. Um, so I, you know, if they lost, if they lost Mackle and they lost Lucas and they added, I, I don't think Will Friedel would do it, but I think, I think Will Friedel's all, all but said he wouldn't do it. But if they added Will Friedel, you know, or they even added like, um, Grandpa Matthews. The sh- the the adult characters need another character they can bounce off of. That's not right, and not not, not just Maya's mom. Right, and not just Maya's mom. You know, um, because Maya's mom's her own little set of problems. It's you don't want. That's like uh, Sean's dad. Like mm-hmm. Sean's dad is fun, but the other adult characters don't work when he's around because you're just like. Just give Sean's dad a loan, man. Help him out. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Poor guy. He's driving trucks all the time. Um, I, yeah, I, I feel like if they, if the adults had, uh, you know, just one other adult they could talk to and it, it wouldn't feel so claustrophobic. Um, and you could deal with adult problems along with the kid problems. Right. Um, I don't know that I'd lose anybody else. I uh, well, I probably would lose Augie. Like you know, Augie would just be adopted by another family. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know when they were when they were casting the show, they were supposed to have uh, two brothers to Riley. Oh wow! And they cut out one of them completely and oh. just left Augie in. <laughs> Which I I can't imagine three kids at that point. That would have been a little bit much. Yeah. Um, well, you know, the original show it was he had an older brother and a younger sister. She she could have had... I, I, you know, I really think the problem was it was just so focused on, on her and Maya. Right. And, and it didn't... It never strayed away from that focus for the most part. You know, what does Topanga do all that? I would kill. She's a, she's a lawyer. I would kill for an episode of Topanga being a lawyer all day. You know, um, seeing her in action. Yeah, I I would I would kill for an episode. They sort of did this. I mean, I shouldn't say it too much. They did kind of try and do it once, where Corey had a problem at work and he took it to the superintendent. You know, who just happened to be uh, Mr. Turner. But right. I would have killed for Corey to talk to anybody. You know, other than those kids. Right. <laughs> and his wife, you know. Um, so, you know, I can't, 
that you know, they're they're rich Hollywood people. I, I assume they they know what they're doing and they were probably making the right decisions. But yeah, if I were restructuring it, I would have um, I would have done it a lot, but maybe one or two episodes a season where the kids just aren't the focus. Mm-hmm. And they probably and, and you know if you go to Netflix or Hulu or even if you're on ABC, you could probably do that. And if you're on Disney Channel, I'm sure the answer is no, 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 no. The kids are the focus all the time. It's a kids' channel. Yeah, right. They basically, I've read something where it was, and who knows? I mean, how true or not true it is. But the answer was it wasn't that it was getting bad ratings. It was getting okay ratings. It was just that it's it skewed too old. You know, yes, watching, exactly. But they weren't the um, the tween and under audience that they wanted. They were a little bit older than that. Right. I um, think I, it's probably the same article because they referenced a show, I think it's on A&E, uh, yeah. Longmire. Longmire, yeah. Where it skewed, it skewed way older than what they were expecting, and then Netflix picked it up, and it lasted another, like, three seasons. Right. Um, yeah, I watched, like, two episodes of Longmire, and I was out, but I'm not 70, so... <laughs> <laughs> that, might have been the, that might have been the reason. Um, yeah, you know, I I don't want to be. I feel like I was a downer. You know, I was like, hey, this is a good, this is an okay show. And it, but it was, I mean, it was a good show, and we watched every episode, and we we enjoyed it for the most part. And I can't say that all about. And and I was able to enjoy it with my entire family. Right. And there isn't a whole lot. There there aren't a whole lot of shows that I can say that about. You- and there's there's also not a whole lot of shows where it's and and I hear it from my friends that are women and I hear it from like the the Facebook community groups that are focused on Girl Meets World like there's not a lot of shows out there for the preteen or teenage girls where they're actually being represented by characters that are just like them. Yeah. yeah. I mean you got on on freeform you have pretty little liars or you have um like the fosters or you have you have these characters that are totally in no way relatable to your average right. 13 or 14 year old girl where girl meets world you have that and you have the things that girls are going through yeah and it's disappointing to see a show where it could have been one of those Boy Meets World, like, because you and I, it came out in 93. We were both freshmen in high school at that time. Right. And, like, we grew up with those characters as they, like, they hit, I think they graduated, like, a year after we had graduated high school because they accelerated the timeline. But, like, Girl Meets World could have been that for this generation where I think this generation of preteen or teenage girls really need something like Boy Meets World or like Girl Meets World with those character representations. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, you're saying that not all girls uh, go and change their wigs and are rock stars at at night? Is that what you're saying? I mean, they had Hannah Montana that age. Well, I, I am saying that, and I'm also saying that the outfits, uh, the clothing that uh, Riley and Maya wear are probably in the more affordable range than what the, the, the high schoolers on uh, Pretty Little Liars are rocking. You know, I don't know what apartments in New York City cost. Let's start there. <laughs> Let's start there. I have no idea what apartments in New York City cost. Now, I know she's a shark lawyer, and he's a teacher. So um, I I didn't feel like they didn't live in a mansion. They lived in a, I guess it was a three-bedroom apartment. with A three-bedroom apartment. With a kitchen and, like, a living area. So I, I sort of felt, I was like, yeah, this isn't like, friend, we're not in friends territory here, where everybody's living in these ridiculous size apartments and they're all working mm-hmm. they're all working at a coffee shop or whatever like you no know, um so uh, you know i feel like the show the show was grounded and and did have that realism 
for the most part to it. Um, and I could see how that would be a big loss. You know, if you're a, if you're 15 or 16 right now and you're a girl or guy, I suppose, um, and you're losing this show, that, that's gotta suck. You know, that, that would, that would suck for me if I had, um, of course we did, we lost Alf too young. Remember when Alf got canceled? <laughs> oh my God. Oh, uh, but we never found out what happened to him. Like the FBI was coming to get him, and that was the end of Alf. Right. I mean, I spent my entire like young adulthood like worried about Alf, like all through high school. Like, I wonder what I wonder what those what those government scientists are doing to Alf right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that was press, pressing on my mind for a long time. <laughs> I, I still haven't gotten over it. I can tell you're really you're really upset about it. You didn't tell me your favorite Boy Meets World episode. My favorite Boy Meets World episode? Yes, tell me your favorite Boy Meets World episode. Dang. there, There's, uh, let's see here. The one where Corey and Topanga both say that they, like, they, they weren't going to go out together, um, like, to go hang out on, like, a, like doing a date. Mm-hmm. And Corey pretends he's someone else, and, and he goes to this party with Sean but he acts totally different than Corey, and he hears about this French girl like all night. <laughs> oh, you you gotta meet the French girl. You gotta meet the French girl, yeah. and he meets the French girl, and it's Topanga. That like that episode, wonderful. Um, I like the, the one Eli- where Topanga gets a haircut. You remember that one? Topan- yes, to- that that one was phenomenal because I mean that was her real hair at that point too. Right, and she cuts it. To prove to Corey that like his hair doesn't matter, and then she gets upset about it. And <laughs> um, I like the one where it's like the ski lodge episode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so many of like the the later later high school and college years. I mean, there's just so many. Like, how did we how did we forget? I forgot. I was gonna say my you know. After Marriage episode, the episode where, um, and this is fitting because this is the finale, I guess, of Girl Meets World is going to deal with the same uh, same issue. But the episode where uh, Topanga's parents move. Long walk to Pittsburgh. Yeah. And, <laughs> I mean, you you were a teenage boy. What would you have done? How many How many human beings would you have killed for a girl to leave her parents in another city, come back to you and stand in front of you in the rain because she loves you so much. Like, uh, that was like the end, like, oh my gosh, this must be what true love is when you're, you know, this is what you think it is, at least when you're in high school. Right? Like, she, she's there and she loves me and she shows up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? That was a really good episode. And, and not only that, that's like a two-parter. Right. And, I don't know if they went, I can't remember if they went on, like, that first episode aired and then they had, like, their winter break where they didn't start back up again for a few weeks. Right. Because that that was a killer cliffhanger. Where she just shows like, up. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I, di- I didn't say goodbye. I didn't say I love you. Like, nothing. And then, like, Sean tries to help him out with, like, the twins that come over. Mm-hmm. And like Corey's talking about Topanga and that like that girl that he's supposed to be making out with, like they just start crying and yeah. like they go through it and like Topanga doesn't pick up like like whenever Corey calls and then to end that show with like seeing Topanga there in the rain, mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah, it's good stuff. It was good stuff. <laughs> Very good stuff. Um. I don't know. You know, one of the things that, you know, they turned Corey, Ben Savage, into Feeney. And so they didn't have Feeney. They had, like, Corini or whatever. (laughs) And you could tell that, like, on the one hand, at, at that work, that worked so well in that school setting. But when he would come home, there was the like the crazy Corey of later seasons. 
Mm-hmm. There was so much that was fun and funny, and Topanga would have to like pull him down off his craziness. What was that thing in the college years where he got into cork? <laughs> he was like, oh my god, <laughs> I, I don't even know. I'm going to the cork store, and you're just like, what the? Um, so there was like so that nervous that nervous energy would show up every once in a while, but it was pretty rare. And I don't know. I I think I just missed Feeny more than anything else. Like, what did he, he got? Like what? Two, he got he showed up on like a poster. Showed up on showed up on the poster. They went to visit at one time where the girls inherited the Feeny call. Yeah. Uh, from Eric. And I think that's been it. Although, with the episode that comes out tonight, uh, on the 20th, yeah. so when this episode's released, uh, they are having, like, that big mass reunion of everybody, including both Morgans. Both? Oh, really? <laughs> yes, Morgan 1 and Morgan 2. <laughs> you, you, you know, uh, I should I should point out that you have seen this episode, and I have not. So, well, uh, it has it has been out there. This is not a spoiler. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, all right. What else you got? I I think that's it. I mean, let for those listening, uh let me point you in two directions for uh Facebook pages or websites. Uh on Facebook, you can find uh, a very active uh Girl Meets World community under uh, BMW SQL, or you can just type in Girl Meets World and it should show up. And there is a website in place uh, by that community. Uh, it's called SaveGirlMeetsWorld.com and it has uh, instructions on how to get Netflix or Hulu or possibly someone else what you should do, what methods you should take to try and get get them to possibly pick it up. And there's been really strong support. I'm looking at a tweet right now from Ben Savage uh, thanking uh, the loyal audience that, you know, they're trying to get uh, Girl Meets World picked up somewhere. So those are two sites. If you want to check them out, uh, again, it's BMW SQL on Facebook or SaveGirlMeetsWorld.com. Uh, if you are keen on trying to get them into another episode, I do know uh, Michael Jacobs came out and said that if they do get picked up, there will be a time jump from this uh, ninth grade year that they would jump forward at some point. I, and I imagine it'd be because of schedules or getting new contracts or whatnot. All right. That would be cool. And uh, I hope they, I do hope they save it. Um, I, uh, I'm desperately looking. I want to throw a plug in here for, um, for some books uh, that we're doing. Um, uh, basically, I want to use your podcast to sell people things. Go for it. Um, you guys who have listened to the podcast for a while know that I. Uh, I'm part of a writer's group called The Syndicate. Uh, We did a collection of short stories called Adventures in the Arcane. We are doing a second collection of short stories this year called, I don't know, Adventures in the Arcane 2. And we have a website, and I can't find the website because that sucks. (laughs) It's like Syndicate Studio or something like that. I had it pulled up on my computer, and then I turned my computer off because it was loud. And then once we got to the end of the podcast, I said to myself, crap, I don't have the website pulled up, so I can't tell David what the uh, website is. David, do you do uh, uh, what show notes, like stuff? I do. I, right. I can put anything in the show notes. All right. So we're gonna, I'm going to find that and make David put it in the show notes because uh, all you, uh, you know, what are, we, what are we calling the fans of this podcast? Geeks? Fans? Yeah. People, listeners, people who, listeners, people who like things, um, I have a thing, and you would like it, I think. So uh, anyway, we're, we have one collection of short stories. We have another collection coming out. Mine are, are about werewolves, and um, that it has none of this has really any connection to uh, Girl Meets World at all. So enjoy, and I will stop pitching now. Well, the website is uh, www.thesyndicatestudio.com. 
And uh, you can definitely pick up the book. It's Adventures in the Arcane. Just go onto Amazon. It's it's both ebook or print. Um, so you can pick it up in either version. I had the the ebook sent over, and I think I read it within two days. It's not anything heavy lifting. Like it's not. It's very quick. All the all the stories are relatively short. Uh, so it's nice to. It's got a good flair of. Uh, it's definitely something for people that are interested in. Uh, really like a, a noir feeling of stories yeah. that just happen to have werewolves or demon hunters, pirates, etc. cetera. Uh, Tony Simmons, my, one, one of the writers in the book, has actually turned his short story into a novel, and he's published it. Um, and you can find that on Amazon, too. I'm reading it now, and I'm really enjoying it, which is why I'm bringing it up. It's uh, uh, I'm going to get the title wrong, but it's essentially The Adventures of uh, Gideon Argo and the Lost Lemurians. Yes, uh, and you know, David, if you haven't read, if you haven't picked up the novel, uh, I think it's only like three bucks on Amazon, and you will you will enjoy it. I'm enjoying the heck out of it. You know, uh, I I didn't pick that one up. I did pick up uh, his first series, um, and the first book in that Caliban cycle. Yeah. Um, that I read, and I enjoyed that, and was really interested to see where it went. But I haven't picked up the uh, the next book in that series. Yeah, I'm reading both the Gideon Argo book and the um, and the second book in that Caliban series he does. And the I like the second book so far. What I've read of it so far better than I like the first book. Um, okay. It he's gotten uh, he's just you know like any writer. If you keep doing it, you get better. And and he's gotten and he's gotten better. And as I read it, I'm just like, wow, he's he's left us all in the dust here. Um, but the uh, definitely pick up the um, you know the short story collection, and then go go check out my friend Tony Simmons's uh, books. And um, you know, sooner or later, I'll finish this novel that I'm working on. It's about well, there you people go. like werewolves, right, David? Uh, people do like werewolves. I'm shocked that, uh, you know, on a Girl Meets World podcast that we're talking about, we've had the vampires, we've had the zombies. Why not werewolves? <laughs> Where is the time for the werewolves? Um, Girl Meets Where? I mean, there was a Boy Meets World episode about werewolves. There was a Boy Meets World episode about werewolves. There you go. We've retired. We cannot forget that. Tying it together. 